Let's talk about how to factor a sum or difference of cubes. You need this type of factoring when you have two terms and they're both a perfect cube and they can be added or subtracted. So what I put here in red are our general formulas. This is just the basic setup of the pattern that we use to factor these. So if I'm given a cubed plus b cubed, then it would factor into a binomial and a trinomial. In the binomial, you put the cube root of each term. So the cube root of a cubed is a, and the cube root of b cubed is b. The same if it were subtracting. The only difference here is going to be our signs. If you notice right here, all the terms look the same, but the signs are different. So you get the, the cube root of each term you were given makes up your binomial. Your first term in your trinomial is the first term in the binomial squared. The middle term are the two terms from the binomial multiplied together. And the last term is the last term in the binomial squared. Gives you the last term in the trinomial. That pattern works for sum or difference of cubes. Your signs will always follow this pattern, plus, minus, plus. So if you're given adding, it follows that pattern, minus, plus, plus. So if you're given subtraction or difference of cubes, it'll always follow that pattern. Or another way to remember it is the word soap. It means the same sign you were given goes first. Then the opposite of that would be next, and the last sign is always positive. Another thing to make a note of is a variable that has a exponent higher than three, how to recognize if that's a perfect cube. It's a perfect cube when the exponent is divisible by three. So like three, six, nine, 12. I don't know if they get bigger than that, but they could. So we just look at whether or not it's a multiple of three or it's divisible by three. And then the numbers that we look at for perfect cubes are one, that's one cubed. Two is, two cubed is eight, excuse me. So 1 cubed is 1, 2 cubed is 8, 3 cubed is 27, and so on. So 4 cubed, and so on. And up to 7 cubed is about how big you'll see any example we're going to find. Let's look at some examples. I just wrote down a few because they all work very similar to one another. So example 1 is 8x cubed minus 1. So you're given a binomial. You notice 8 x cubed and 1 are all perfect cubes. So you factor it into a binomial and a trinomial. So set up a little pair of parentheses and a bigger pair of parentheses. The cube root of 8x cubed would be 2x. The cube root of 1 is 1. Then you square the first term in the binomial to get the first term in the trinomial. So 2x squared would become 4x squared. In the middle, you multiply these two together. So 2x times 1 is just 2x. And for the last term, you square the last term in the binomial. Then my signs are minus, plus, plus. Because I was given minus, I start with minus. Or you're given a difference, so start with the difference. And then minus, plus, plus. Or soap, same as I was given. Opposite of that, always positive. Let's look at number two. So you want to check and see, is everything here a perfect cube? 27 is a perfect cube. That's 3 cubed. Y to the 6th power, the 6 is divisible by 3, and 8 is 2 cubed. So this one would also work just to go ahead and factor a binomial and a trinomial factor. You also want to check for greatest common factor, but on this one there is nothing I can take out first. So let's go ahead and factor the cube root of 27y to the 6th power would be 3y squared, because you just divide 6 by 3, plus the cube root of 8, which would be 2. Square the first term to get the first term, so that would become 9y to the 4th power. Multiply these two together and put it in the middle, so that would become 6y squared, and square the last term to get the last term. And then it's plus, because I was given a positive, so plus, minus, plus. Or same, opposite, always positive. Let's look at number three. You have 16x cubed minus 2y cubed. So you notice you've got some cubes, but 16 and 2 are not perfect cubes. So what else might we be able to do? We could take out 2 and see if what's left over will give us a difference of cubes.
So is 8x cubed minus y cubed a difference of cubes? Yes. So you leave the 2, your greatest common factor, but then you're going to factor the binomial and the trinomial. So the factors of 8x cubed minus y cubed would be 2x minus y, because those are their cube roots. Square the first term, multiply them together in the middle, and square the last term. Put in your sign. So minus plus plus, or same opposite, always positive. All right, let's look at number four. You have 7x to the 6, 8. The x to the 6 and the 8 are perfect cubes, but 7 is not. Can I take anything out? No. So this one would actually be prime. So you don't want to force a difference or a sum of cubes to work out. It only works when it happens to be a perfect cube, and you can be adding or subtracting, but like I say, sometimes it might look like it would work 